little today talk about the journey I made, uh, experienced at one of my customers. And all the tools I show you can use by your own. You don't need the tool which is summarizing all of these. I call it a cluster image scanner. You can use all of these tools alone. Um, and the cluster image scanner itself is also open source. So everything I tell you, you can use uh, for free. But mainly we focus on the story and how I evolved uh, so that you can pick uh, the interesting things for your own company. Who of you knows how many images you have in production? Oh, there's one person here. How many do you have? Three. Three? Okay, you're not having a production system, maybe. All right. Uh, I'm Timo Pagel. I'm a freelance DevSecOps consultant, so just that you know a bit, little bit about me. Uh, today we focus on uh, on the custom image scanner, so I will give you an introduction, then we take a look at the DevSecOps journey and what scans are implemented and how I implemented them. In case we have time, we will take a look at a demonstration in the end and we will come to a conclusion. Typical problems are when you're using uh, production cluster with images like Kubernetes uh, is that you have missing patch management and let's, that leads to exploitable containers. And in addition, you might have misconfigurations in your containers, something like that the container is running uh, as root and doesn't need to do that. This is a very short introduction to explain why security uh, is important and you should listen to me. So this is uh, a service surrounded by a container running at a host. In the case you're not having patch management, then an attacker might be able to uh, compromise the service, then compromise the container, and then compromise uh, the host to uh, even explore more critical services or databases which are more important for an attacker. Um, in case you would have patch management, an attacker might would have not be able to execute an Nginx exploit to go into the service. In case you would have patch management, an attacker would have not been able to execute a run C uh, breakout vulnerability to break out of the container. And in case you would have good patch management, the host might have not allowed uh, the execution of Shellshock because you would have in your uh, shell version. So we all have learned now security is very important, especially patch management. And let us come to different options of how you can uh, uh, approach. This is a typical company. Uh, this is also the, the creator of the cluster image scanner. My client is the ASE. Uh, they created it together with uh, Signali Duna, a German insurance. And uh, they use uh, a lot of containers, they use Kubernetes, they use multi-cloud, so they are not having only AWS, they have AWS and Azure and Google, uh, where they run different Kubernetes clusters, and we have a lot of microservices in them, which we are uh, developed. So what I need as a security from a security perspective is that we take a look at all the different containers which are in the production cluster and the report the known vulnerabilities to the developers and maybe some to the operators. So you see here already, I, uh, uh, known vulnerabilities are important for developers. They are developing software, they have applications uh, which they are creating, so they have third party dependencies in there. While I wouldn't uh, use the same scanners for operations because they are mainly using third party images, to patch a single library in there is mostly not in the area of influence of that operations team. This is basically the architecture. We have multiple Kubernetes clusters um, where I detect which images are inside. That's very important. We, we, we shouldn't trust uh, your, your processes around it. So you, we, 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 we cannot, for example, scan only the master branch of an application. Um, 
I will come to that point later, why it's important to take a look at the clusters. Uh, there I, we, we collect the images, then we actually scan these images, so we need access to the image registry. Afterwards, uh, it's, it's important to handle this vulnerability and make it accessible to developers and operations, so there, therefore we need a vulnerability management system, and the vulnerability management system, for example, detects when we have one vulnerability um, in our application and we run the scan again. So it detects this as a duplicate. I found this uh, finding already. And when you have treated this finding, like you mark it as false positive, or you uh, accepted the finding because you know next week is coming a patch, so you accepted it for one week, then Defect Dojo uh, won't raise this issue again. I use Slack as a notification mechanism. In this case, uh, then the uh, developers or operations people are informed about misconfigurations or uh, known vulnerabilities. This is the same slide with a bit more information. So we have multiple clusters uh, where we are collected and the orchestrator in the middle is using multiple uh, scans. One is dependency track. Dependency track uh, is an asset inventory, uh, which also provides the ability to scan for known vulnerabilities. Another one is the image uh, lifetime scan here, which uh, detects how old is this image in case there is a created date on it. So then I can very quickly see if in that cluster there is patch management or not. In case there are images which are years old, I know there is no patch management. And in case there are images which are a few weeks old or maybe a few months, then I know they are doing patch management very well. So that is a very powerful metric from my point of view. It doesn't say there is a vulnerability inside, but due to the time, uh, as older an image gets, as more vulnerabilities will be uh, potentially inside. I started here on the bottom left with dependency check uh, as a Jenkins plugin in 2017. That was the initial approach. Um, that didn't work so well because we used the dependency uh, check uh, plugin from Jenkins also uh, to accept findings so we could increase the number of findings we accept, but developers never lowered it. So they were always happy to increase it. We have now one finding then on the next day, or another finding, so we increase it again, or another finding on the next day, we increase it again. But then when uh, they patched and the vulnerabilities disappeared, they didn't lower uh, the quality gates, so that didn't work well. Um, so we needed a solution for that, and that is uh, Defect Dojo as a vulnerability management system. I have to say it's not, there are also alternatives to, to Defect Dojo. Um, uh, open source alternatives, but uh, we decided for, for Defect Dojo here. Um, it has a very old UI, but it does a job. So in Defect Dojo, you can handle a finding directly. So this specific finding, I can accept for a week, for example, because I, ex uh, I think that there is a patch coming, and uh, then on the next day, it doesn't come again. So the vulnerability management system is very uh, important. You can also do it often in tools you're using, so you could do the same in dependency check with a so-called uh, suppression XML. But when you already estimate that you will have more scans, then you should uh, go for vulnerability, vulnerability management system. This is a typical build and deployment pipeline. You have the developer, version control, a build server, an internal repository or a registry. Uh, you have a production new system and the production system. And when it comes to known vulnerability, what is very important for your process uh, from my point of view is that you, when you have an issue that you don't do this, mostly people tend to uh, stop the pipeline there. From my point of view, that is not helping because the developer might have fixed the vulnerability and another one just came 
uh, from a researcher, and then you stop the process and stop the developer to deploy this new patch. So it needs to be asynchronous from my point of view. Then afterwards, uh, I, did, I, uh, I, decide, I, I realized that often you have complications when you want to deploy uh, things to your production system. Uh, so I used uh, customize, I, so I checked out the GitOps repository and used customize to detect which images should be in production. And uh, yeah, basically master is not equal to production. The master of an application uh, is not equal to production because you have processes where you might need an approval from someone who is not there or you have technical issues. So a technical issue would hinder uh, you to have the master branch in production or the latest master branch in production. And also you might have a yeah, broken product owner which should give an approval until it goes to production and then uh, you are also not having the master in production. So that's why I uh, used customize uh, for, the, um, for the GitOps repositories which were in use. It, it was a, a nice process because often I didn't get all the images due to this customize and every team did it slightly different so that wasn't a good approach in the end. Uh, so that is where we're here. Uh, now come to, yeah, to, the, to the product cluster image scanner uh, where I actually scanned the images which are in production. So that was the picture you saw on the start where I have a collector in the multiple Kubernetes clusters. I collect what is actually deployed and then use dependency check uh, to scan these images. Uh, mainly I'm using uh, Java uh, applications and so uh, I can, uh, the dependency check can take a look at the jars, open them and see which library in which version is used, and then it can detect the known vulnerabilities inside and uh, we use the repos with, with the, the, the process with defect dojo and Slack to notify the developers. So that was, uh, for, for me, a big step. That was very, very nice for me when I reached this uh, because now I really had the real insight of what is in production. Uh, we, have, we have different layers. We also have the container operating system and the host operating system. The host operating system I can't scan with these tools so far, so I'm focusing on the container operating system and the application uh, layer inside of an image. Uh, basically, just to, to help you uh, to understand uh, uh, how known vulnerabilities are working, you have a build, uh, then you start a container. Maybe you have another build, but don't deploy it. And in parallel, someone discovered uh, a vulnerability, and after some time, there is a patch published, so it's independent from the developer. And what I discovered is that it's very nice to know how old is this container, and I do that by taking a look at the creation time of that container. It doesn't work only uh, work, work always. When you have a reproducible image, your creation date will be set to uh, the 1st January of 1970, so then I can't take a look at it, but otherwise uh, it works very well, so you have these uh, layers, project layer, multiple base image layers maybe, and they all have a build date, so I can just take a look at the project layer, which the developers uh, created with, with their uh, commit, basically, and I can use this date. So what do you think? Uh, what was the oldest image I found at one customer? I didn't use a cluster image scanner for that. Uh, I just uh, created a simple script to, to take a look at it with Copier. What do you think was the oldest? Do you have an idea? 1970. Ah, very close. Uh, see, the, the image, this, this uh, was from 2018, but we come to one uh, other check I have, which where I found it from 2017, actually at an enterprise customer. Um, so that was the image check. Uh, I have also a distroless check, so you might uh, aim for an architecture pattern distroless that you only copy the application into your image. 
uh, and not have, for example, a shell around it, so that is distressed and I check for it, so in case there is a bash available, you're not following this uh, best practice pattern. Uh, then I also check for potentially running as root. Currently, it's potentially running as root because I only check how is the container getting executed. Is it as root or as a user? I'm not checking how it is configured in the cluster, but that is something which I'm working on right now and that will be released in a, in a few months. Then we come to the base image lifetime check, which I uh, added afterwards. Um, the, the base image lifetime, as the name says, uh, we are now taking a look uh, at the uh, layer here on the bottom, or uh, the layer where we uh, applied a package manager update, like up get uh, dist upgrade, so that we updated all packages in that container. Then it's for me valid that the layer on the bottom might be older than a layer on top. So I'm checking for is there a layer which has these updates or I take the oldest one. And here we come to 2017. So at one enterprise uh, customer, I have a lot of insurances as customers. Uh, so at one of them, I found a base image layer from 2017. So that gives you insights, right? So you know, I need to help this project uh, to do better patch management and maybe first to understand why it's important. This simple check. Yeah, then in addition, uh, you might have uh, heard about these attacks where an attacker is uh, taking over the account of an uh, open source uh, contributor, and then due to this, that they introduce, uh, they, they, they compromise the build and introduce, um, for example, a crypto miner into uh, a library. And with the malware uh, check, I at least can find when there is a, 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 such, such a crypto miner or something evil inside of the image. Uh, it's a bit late. It's, it's only uh, when it's already in production. I'm using this tool only in production. So it is, you could say it's late, but it's better than, than nothing. And on the other hand, uh, an attacker might just download the crypto miner when the image is getting executed. So this check wouldn't help in this case. But I think it's useful. That's why it's uh, included. Uh, yeah, and now uh, we have dependency check. Um, this is a replacement for dependency check, but it has some additional features. While dependency check is a tool which you run only once, and uh, then it's showing you the vulnerabilities in that application. Uh, dependency track is a server-side uh, component which, uh, where you upload a software bill of materials, and then it checks for you the vulnerabilities. And in addition, as it has the software bill of materials, it can show you which libraries and which versions you're using in production. So when you were a bit frustrated uh, in December, uh, where on a Friday the lo uh, lock for shell vulnerability got uh, announced and it, you tried to figure out, do I have lock for j in that particular version in my production systems? Then dependency track, which is an asset inventory for your components, uh, would have helped here. because it has, due to the upload of the software bill of materials, all your components as an inventory, and you can search in it. It uh, also performs periodically vulnerability scans, known vulnerability scans, so you will also get notified about uh, known vulnerabilities uh, in your applications. This uh, is, is a process. It's actually a bit more complicated. I simplified it a bit for you. So during the build, uh, you can create a software bill of materials. And uh, then within the build, you can put the uh, uh, bill of materials, for example, as JSON in your image. 
there are different uh, standards for it. Uh, for example, Cyclone DX, which uh, I'm using. And then uh, when you use a tool like uh, Swift, it scans your image for all components, so also the operation system layers. And it um, also aggregates with the uh, BOM you have placed in the root folder. And uh, then you can uh, upload this uh, to dependency track, the whole software build of materials, including the BOM you created during the build, and including the other uh, dependencies which uh, Swift has found, and uh, then you get the vulnerabilities out of dependency track, and if you want, you can also, uh, as I do it, upload to your vulnerability management system like Defect Dojo. So now we, we took a look at all the different scanners, how I came to where I am nowadays. Uh, so um, for the process, we also have the notification. The notification happens uh, in Slack. Uh, for for uh, SDA, SE at least, I have other customers which are using emails or rocket chat, and then uh, they get such uh, informations in Slack so that they can uh, handle the vulnerabilities, the different teams. It's important that the teams are getting notified, so each responsible team is getting notified, um, and not uh, one person then afterwards delegating the vulnerabilities to different teams. Uh, I uh, reached that by adding contact information uh, as annotations, for example, email, Slack, or Rocket Chat, uh, and in case one of these uh, annotations or labels is set, then uh, the collector will pick it up, write it together with the image uh, in a file that gets uploaded to S3, and the orchestrator, which is sc actually scanning, is uh, picking this uh, image list up, and after the scanning is performed, I can inform the uh, teams in the way they want to get informed. So now we have reached a very good point, and as uh, technicians, uh, uh, we might stop here, but the actual problem starts now. So, so we need to uh, take into account the people. So how do we motivate people to actually take a look at all these findings, and especially in the, far, in the start, when you have not implemented good pension management, you will get a lot of findings. So you need to motivate these people. Uh, in, in general, I tried mo to motivate people with uh, lists where they can, could get points for different activities, uh, where I had to track these activities, and that didn't work well because I had too much work. Uh, so as soon as I stop, uh, stopped asking what have you done in, in the area of security, they stopped. Uh, this, it stopped. I was hoping that they come to me and tell me I have done this to so give me one point, but that didn't work. So I had to come up with another solution. So what I, uh, I gave out now is uh, this uh, cyber cleanup cat as a stacker. You can also see it on my, on my laptop. And um, I, I created statistics. So re, uh, what is important? One is the uh, 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 image lifetime because it gives a very quick view, uh, the base image lifetime, and the response. So how quickly uh, are the teams responding to the findings? Is it a day for a critical finding? Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it a year? And I, I created a, a statistic with the average, and half of the teams, uh, I did that now in two companies, half of the teams which are on the better side, they got the sticker, and the other half not. That also includes, team also includes the product owner, and uh, agile coaches, so that really everyone gets it. And then the other half also wants to have it. So that was something which, which which worked for me to, to get these people motivated that they actually take a look at all these findings which are coming. Yeah, so let us come to the conclusion. I will first show you uh, uh, what you can, uh, what we have achieved with this cluster image scanner. As I said, you can use all these tools alone. For example, you have to decide, uh, do I only want to scan for known vulnerabilities? So maybe dependency track will be enough for you. It also has simple uh, uh, treatment of 
uh, of, uh, of findings, uh, but maybe you say you want to have multiple scanners and you should head directly for vulnerability management system. What we see here is a DevSecOps maturity model, which shows you uh, different dimensions. For example, on the right, uh, we see design. Today, we don't focus on design. We focus on the one above patch management. Uh, there, we have achieved a lot with the cluster image scanner, with the process I've shown you. Uh, in the static dev, we have also so the detection of known vulnerabilities. And uh, uh, we also have uh, this, the tool Defect Dojo, the consolidation area. Here we have a summary of what are all the things you get directly or indirectly from the cluster image scanner. Uh, or when you set up a process like this, um, here on the left, you see the different scans we are performing. Um, this is the overall DevSecOps maturity model with the cluster image scanner and Defect Dojo combined. And yeah, to, to summarize, um, ah, maybe we, I, I have four minutes left before we come to the conclusion. We should take a look at the tool itself. Ah, no, that was wrong. I need to open this differently. Uh, the cluster image scanner works with Argo workflows uh, in the end. That is the, the, the engine which starts all the different um, scans. We see for, this is a test. So I first delete test products in, in uh, Defect Dojo. Uh, and now you see that I fetch an image list. Uh, in this image list, we provide the different sources uh, for the... Uh, for the orchestrator, so the collector might, you have, might have multiple collector which put uh, their Im image lists in different uh, repositories. Currently it's with Git. Uh, I'm working on it to make it uh, S3 buckets and uh, they are producing these output JSON. Uh, yeah, now we see that there is a run uh, subflow, so this is creating all the different scans. So depending on how many images you have, you have uh, as many workflows, Argo workflows you will see here, where all the different scans are performed. And here we see one of the scans. Uh, so we have on the left, for example, the uh, software build of materials creation with Swift. Afterwards, we upload it to dependency track and uh, then get the vulnerabilities out and push them uh, to Defect Dojo. On the right, we see that there is still the dependency check. You don't need to do both. You should select one. And in the middle, you see self-created scans, for example, the image lifetime scans. Yeah, and then uh, when it's all done, you will find this uh, uh, vulnerabilities in uh, the, the known vulnerabilities in dependency track, and you will find uh, the uh, scans which we, uh, which I created on my own, like the lifetime check uh, in defect order only. So to summarize, uh, there are a lot of different scanning tools out. I have showed you shown you a lot. You can use them combined with the cluster image scanner or use them standalone. Um, these uh, safe created scans, like the lifetime scans, you can also find in the uh, GitHub repository of the cluster image scanner in case you want to do it by yourself. And um, yeah, you should think about a vulnerability management system like Defect Dojo. Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, so this is the time to go to questions. Before going to Slido, is there any questions here? Someone has questions that want the mic? Raise your hand. One, two, three. Okay, so we have one question. I'll leave it to Tom to answer it. Yeah, okay, the, the question is, isn't it better to scan during a pipeline build before rolling it out on my clusters? Uh, that's what I have tried to, try to show with this slide where we had the build, uh, the running container, and on the bottom are uh, the known vulnerabilities. So yes, you can check 
uh, what you have in uh, in your images uh, during the build, but uh, especially when you have uh, when you when you are running already and and it's working a bit, then it's important what is in production. Um, because the problem is that it's asynchronous. I think I, I said it in the talk, but I repeat. Uh, uh, the, the, the developer has not done something wrong in this moment. Maybe they are patching right now uh, a, a library with a critical vulnerability. And when you then say, uh, no, it, it's, it's a problem, uh, and, and you stop the pipeline, because then it's very frustrating. So that's why it should be asynchronous. Yes, you could inform the developer uh, during the, the build, but from my point of view, that is an overload because you get already daily the known vulnerabilities. From my experience, developer, in, in the best case, take a look at it uh, two times in a week. So it's, it's, it's from, from my point, in, in enough uh, from, from a practical point of view uh, to do it in production. When you come to, when you ask me as a, as a, as a freelancer, uh, from what is good from the security point of view, uh, you could also argue uh, that it's important that you know what you're uh, having right now, what you're de deploying. Uh, so yes, that would give you maybe a bit better insight, but you can, from my point of view, wait a day until you have the information. You are anyway not patching it so quickly. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Any one last questions, perhaps? I have one, if I may. Um, so, all the tools that you built are available somewhere on your own GitHub repository, perhaps, or? Uh, yeah, this is uh, this was a custom image scanner that I have linked in, in the slide, uh, which which were there in uh, in the end. Yeah. Uh, so that is uh, at this company SDASE, where you find it, uh, and the other tools are all open source uh, from mainly from OWASP, so you can find them there. Nice. Thank you very much for your talk. A big round of applause, please, for Tom.